I'm very excited to have my next guest join us. His brand new album is called Zeros. That guitar playing fool, cool cat himself, Declan McKenna. Declan, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, Pete. How you doing? So I am very curious, right off the bat, who did that video? Who presented that cameo to you in celebration of your album release? Uh, it, was, <laughs> it was Jesse. He, uh, he does... Um, he he kind of works with my management, but he, he did all this cameo stuff, and it's I not not just I think there's a couple of people involved in in it, but I think he was the one sending out emails. Um, I didn't I, I didn't have any involvement in what was what was sent to to Carol Baskin, but um, it's pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> now, were you familiar with the Tiger King and all that stuff? And yeah. did you... I got really into that. I I really liked it. And your theory, please. <sighs> it's hard to say i don't want to you know i feel like joe exotic i mean he, he got what 40 years or something like that i feel like there must he's i feel like he's up to much more shady stuff you know he's very he's got a bit of a sort of personality cult going on so i feel like there's i feel like he you know as much as he wants to hate on carol baskin there's it it, it, it seems a, sh a kind of shady guy <laughs> carol i don't know there's probably some dark stuff going on there she's kind of got a you know, sort of uh, 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 a look about her that, that that sometimes feels like uh, I don't know. Um, right. I, I don't know. I feel like I feel like everyone's just being horrible to these people. They're just they're just trying trying to trying to trying to rear tigers, which I don't necessarily agree with. You know, trying to make a buck, you know, these people. What can, what can you do? <laughs> Are you a conspiracy theorist? Do you believe in their, you know looking into the alternative side of the stories and all that stuff? kind of like it becomes tiresome as well like conspiracy theories like i've been into it on and off like different different ideas and conspiracy theories but um you know it's easy to get lost in that stuff these days and there's so much now where it's just like you know there's people who just really reject everything anyone says and like that is so that's quite a scary point to be at so like conspiracy theories theories now just seem to keep getting darker and darker for me and every time i see sort of you know i guess i subscribe to some things that are like conspiracy theories but there comes a limit where you can't just question everything that, that right. comes comes to you but at the same time we are also all advertised a bunch of stuff that we can't really control. So that's kind of scary as well. So all, it's all conspiracy, really. <laughs> <laughs> now, we met here in San Francisco years ago when you were performing at Outside Lands. And I vividly remember a conversation we had, whether it was on or off camera, about Twitter. I think maybe your management wanted you to tweet about how you were there and promote and things like that. And you had just joined Twitter a few years prior to that. And your first tweet was something to the effect of, my life is over. And man, has Twitter and, and social media, for that matter, evolved? Speaking of conspiracy theories, all this stuff that's all over the place. I'm curious what your activity level is like and how you're consuming and how you deal with, you know, all this misinformation. Yeah, it's strange and you have to take enough space from it because um, it just isn't the real world. Like a lot of the time, you know, the Internet is just kind of very, very intensified and very, um, you know, it kind of plays with your emotions a lot and it's just like yeah it's almost like someone described like social media it's like a dummy it's like you start to have emotions and then you go on twitter and it's like a dummy but it like makes everything worse eventually <laughs> and it's like that's kind of i kind of hate having that relationship with my phone so um i try and stay off it a lot but it's also kind of that little obligation of like it's kind of part of my job now like to be kind of active on social media i guess right. um and it sucks so, you in with all these either you know yeah. gifts the, the, you know the entertaining things and then they dangle all these random videos and then you next thing you know it's, it's like TikTok, right I don't, are you on TikTok as well i am on TikTok. i don't let any of them send me notifications anymore because i can't get notifications for TikTok or twitter or anything because then i'll just I'll come crawling back and I'm just like, you cannot, you cannot tell me to, I, well, I'm in charge here. <laughs> Don't tell me to come back. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly how I feel as well. You have this fascination with the world ending, I feel, in terms yeah. of the various song uh, topics and the things that you're singing about. Where does this interest come from? I think I was kind of, 
in this record kind of trying to create a world very similar to our own that I, I could write about maybe something that felt a little bit more futuristic um but ultimately like i just feel like we live in a very destructive world and i feel like you know the most dramatic way that you can kind of write about that when you're sort of telling stories writing songs is about you know a, a catastrophe or the, the the world ending and like i kind of almost thought of the album at one point as like different ways the world could end or like you know there's like one song it's like a flood one mentions an asteroid like all of these different things and you know we're feeling now more than ever humanity under threat partially because of its own actions partially because of you know us being in a sort of unattainable world right now you know um and you know stuff happens but uh we are t totally at risk and we put ourselves at risk and we are you know live in a destructive world and we can sometimes see ourselves as more as like you know powerful enough to control that but um you, it's felt the last years that like humanity can feel like it's imploding on itself and like that you know this destructive world is only getting more destructive and i think yeah i was kind of wanting to tell stories around that theme with the with the album destruction was a key a key theme right you know there's a saying that art thrives under difficult situations and yeah. uncertainties whether in the personal relationships personal life or in the world it goes without saying what's been going on and I know you're not a political artist you don't try to be a political artist but how have you been internalizing the observations and feelings that you've been going through and seeing throughout 2020 and what do you predict or what do you think will come out in future music um I mean I yeah I I, I think people are gonna have a lot of time to think I mean for me, creatively, it's been kind of weird because, like, I've had all sorts of, you know, other stuff happening with the album release and things changing around and being sort of different from how I expected, obviously. Um, but, yeah, there's there's a certain truth to that. I mean, you know, I think having a positive mindset and feeling in a good place is conducive with making good art, but in the same breath, like, sometimes songs need to be written, and I think that's probably happening in, in the art world, you know, the stuff that needs to be said is being said. And, and, it, and you know, over the coming months as that music sort of comes out to the world, it'll sort of hopefully lead to something new as we come out of this sort of period in the world, you know. Um, I think as we come out of, you know, the lockdown phase, whatever it still is, like, you know, COVID world, um, yeah more more vital messages will come out and people that sort of connection and unity maybe that the time has brought will hopefully sort of come into a really positive fruition like that's what we can hope for rather than some kind of you know something very negative coming out of it but um because there will be negative things coming out of it and then you know it's a tough time for everyone so um Absolutely. yeah we can hope that it, it has a, a positive shift you wrote this album with this whole world is ending type of theme, if you want to call it that. Do you think that your next batch of material may be a little more hopeful? Um, I think it'll be more like relaxed, I guess. I think, uh, you know, it's quite, it is intense. It is fast paced, it is high energy. And I think the stuff that I'm gearing towards now, I mean, you never really know when you make a record, like if you get down the line, you're like, oh, this is what I'm doing. but. Right now, like, I'm kind of going back into sort of working digitally on a laptop, like just doing, you know, producing stuff myself and quite liking a sort of more relaxed take or more sort of softer, gentler feels. So, yeah, there's probably some, some truth to that. And um, I'm kind of excited to just get creative with it over the next few months, having sort of less and less other stuff to do. I can just kind of get back to writing and doing the stuff that I really, really enjoy doing. So, yeah, I think it'll be more chilled out <laughs> so, in one way or another. Well, we really look forward to that. Uh, before I let you go, you did a really cool cover of uh, Paul McCartney's song, Heart of the Country. What inspired that? Um, my friend sent me a video of Paul McCartney just playing on an acoustic guitar the other day, and he did, he did that, and he did... You know, this is a long time ago. He's singing with Linda McCartney as well. Um, and 
yeah, he played through a few songs, and I was just like, ah, oh, The Country, that's such a good song. And I just had it stuck in my head the whole day, and then I just picked up my banjo, because I have a banjo, apparently, which I rarely use, but, you know, um, and uh, me and my housemate Josh just kind of figured it out and played it together, and it's quite off the cuff, but it was just like, I don't know, it was nice. And it feels, it's a profound song, you know, there's like a simplicity to it, but like a sense of, you know, going away, which is kind of resonant. So yeah, it's it was just, it just kind of random, but I've been thinking more about putting stuff on SoundCloud, used to do it all the time. So it was just a fun thing to do one Sunday. And yeah, yeah people seem to like it. No, I love it. I, I really am digging that. And I hope we get more covers out of you. It's just as, as you're, you know, just fooling around in your bedroom or whatever. Uh, I really appreciate you taking time for the chat. Congratulations on this album. It's amazing. I can't tell you how many times I've listened to it. Can't <laughs> wait to see you back here in San Francisco. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me again.